Hello and thank you for tuning in to these series of videos on the Libre PDM server. After this, you should be pretty comfortable working in the server for yourself and doing everything you need. Let's start by installing the server. Here in my Windows machine, I would like to install the Alibre PDM server. Now we might want to ask, on what machine should we install the Alibre PDM server? If you are a single CAD user that uses your CAD machine all the time, it probably makes sense to install it on the machine that you use all the time. But if you're a CAD user that has multiple computers that you would like to work from, or if you're a user that is working with a whole bunch of people, or if you're a company, it might make more sense to install the server software on a Windows machine somewhere in your network. So if you need to access this from a lot of different points, it probably makes a lot of sense to be able to install this on a dedicated machine that can run uh, for a long period of time. I'll go ahead and select my PDM server here, and I'll accept the terms. Now we'll go through the install process on installing the Alibre server. And once the uh, server installation has run its course, we could go ahead and run the server. From here, this is what our server management console looks like. We'll be addressing this in a later video. And here we are able to specify where we want our server data to live. I really recommend the default location, but you can choose whatever location you'd like. Next, we have a default safe uh, created here. The safe, of course, is the volume where all of your files will go that get shared with everybody else on the PDM server. And I can start my server by clicking on the start button here. Now our server is online, and we can have connections with others when the server is online. Now if I'd like to manage uh, perhaps another volume of data, I can create a safe over here, and I can make a new underscore safe, or whatever I'd like to call it. I'll say OK. And now I've got two safes, or two different uh, volumes that users can connect to. It's probably somewhat rare that you would need to have more than one safe, but if you do, here it is, and here's how to do it. Likewise, I can delete this. Now, if I right click on it, you'll see that delete safe is grayed out. So I'll go ahead and stop my server. When I right click on my safe, I can see that delete is still grayed out, but I can deactivate it. So we'll go ahead and deactivate our safe, and finally, we can delete. So that's how we create and delete safes. We have some other options on this right click that uh, might be useful. We can back up our safe and we'll cover backups in a future video. We also can export our safe's metadata if we would like to back something of that up. I'll go ahead and restart my server now. As of the making of this video, an expert license allows a user to have one connection without any need for a specific server license. If you would like to have more than one concurrent connection at a time, then we uh, would need to get a license for that. Let's go ahead and stop the server, and you can talk to a Libre or a reseller to obtain a, a multiple user license. We'll go to Tools and Manage License. And here we're able to get a multi-user license key that we can enter if we wish to have many connections at the same time. We have other tools available to us. We can schedule backups, which we'll cover in a future video, change the language, restore from the backups that we've made, manage and clear a license, of course, and our help and about. If we wish to restore from a file, then we can click on restore and browse for the file that we would like to restore from. And then we'll simply click restore and it will overwrite the safe with the contents of that file that was backed up. Again, more on that in a future video. And that's how we make the install. We hope you enjoyed and catch us in the next video. Thanks.